the real story of Pocahontas is way darker than the animated movie. Let's start at the top. While it's true that Pocahontas was the daughter of a powerful chief, she would never have been romantically involved with John Smith. In this new world, I will find not only adventure, but also love. Because when John Smith arrived in Jamestown in 1607, Pocahontas was only 10 years old. Maybe love is, uh, deeper in the woods. And Pocahontas never saved John Smith's life because no one was trying to kill him. Smith either made the whole thing up or misunderstood a religious ceremony welcoming him to the tribe. Welcome, friend. Uh, the violent native seeks to crush me in his bear-like grip. What? No. Man, this guy is dense. But the biggest mistake is that John Smith wasn't the hero of this story. Frankly, he and the British were total jerks. When the Jamestown settlers first arrived, Chief Powhatan welcomed them and gave them badly needed supplies. That is, until the autumn of 1608, when a particularly bad harvest meant the Powhatan people didn't have any more to give. My apologies. We barely have enough to get our own people through the winter. But the British reaction to this was, uh, pretty violent. Merry Christmas. I can't believe I tried to hug you. The British threatened and harassed them so much that Chief Powhatan ended up moving to the entire village further from Jamestown, just so they'd be left alone. Uh, these guys are the worst. Let's get out of here! <laughs> Even if I was an adult, I wouldn't marry that jerk. Pocahontas ended up marrying the warrior Cocoam, who she actually liked quite a bit. You know what I like most about you? You didn't violently threaten my people. Meanwhile, back in Jamestown, John Smith, the intrepid explorer, was lighting his pipe and accidentally blew himself up with gunpowder and had to return to England to recover. What a maroon. So that's the end of the story? <laughs> Weird. Nope. From there, things only got worse for Pocahontas. I should have guessed. After John Smith's departure, Pocahontas was kidnapped by another British settler who was also feuding with her father. You feud with us? We steal your kids. You know what? I'm going to say it. These people are assholes. While in captivity, Pocahontas converted to Christianity, learned English, and married a man named John Rolfe. From the second I saw you, ripped from your family and cultural context, I knew you were the one. I vow to love you always. And I vow to make the best of the worst possible situation. That's the British spirit. Then Pocahontas, John Rolfe, and their newborn son went to England on a publicity trip meant to stir up more investment for Jamestown. Come one, come all to look at John Rolfe and his beautiful native wife. Wait, wait, wait. They used a kidnapped woman as a marketing tool? That's terrible! Yes, it was. And unfortunately, after this visit to London, Pocahontas died of disease at the age of 21. She'd never see her home or her people again. How in the world did we get a sweet love story from such a sad tale? Well, for that, you can thank that old exploding sleaze bag, John Smith because in 1612, he wrote a best-selling account of his adventures that falsely depicted Pocahontas as grown up, beautiful, and into him. And after Pocahontas saved my life, her beautiful adult body embraced me. You're such a hero, you'd never blow yourself up with gunpowder, she exclaimed. This dude also claimed in another book that Pocahontas and 30 other women in her tribe attacked him with a dance and demanded sexual favors. And then things started to get really hot. Oh yeah, everybody wanted a piece of John Smith. <laughs> oh, what a creep. Creepily influential. Smith's account became the basis for centuries of mythologizing. And it was those myths that made their way into the animated movie 350 years later. 30 women, sexual favors. I smell a G-rated children's film. 